This self-driving race car is one of the biggest coding projects I've ever worked on in my free time. Here, this is my team's autonomous race car that's driving itself in a competition called Robo Race. And in Robo Race, a real race car is on a real track somewhere in the world trying to avoid virtual obstacles while collecting virtual rewards. In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about Robo Race rounds three and four and what it's like to be an engineer on MIT Driverless, a team that's trying to go for this top place finish and all these technical difficulties that we've encountered and how we're thinking about working through them. In rounds one and two, we thought we had come up with the most optimal path planning algorithm that would get us the most rewards while avoiding the most obstacles. We called this algorithm Spline Racer. In the previous rounds, we were unable to actually use this algorithm because of lack of testing. But entering rounds three and four, we had Spline Racer ready, and we were gonna deploy it so that we could reach that top place finish. But what actually happened? In round three, the car just was having a bad day and did not want to run. We had Spline Racer ready, but for some reason, the car had some technical difficulties. We were never actually able to activate our AI driver, and so we didn't get a chance to run our code during round three. But round four was significantly more exciting. Clearly we see here that our algorithm is working. We are doing so well collecting all these rewards and we actually got the most rewards out of all of the teams. But let's rewind slightly back to the really tight curve that we call chicane. And now let's pause here, zoom in a little bit. Bum, bum, bum. From this clip, we can see that our car actually went out of bounds. We actually left the track boundaries, which meant by Robo Race rules, even though we did so well interacting with the metaverse, we were disqualified, which was very sad and very disappointing after a run that got us all really, really excited. But let's actually dive a little bit deeper into this issue and ask ourselves why did we go out of bounds so that we don't run into this issue in the next race. In our path planning algorithm, we actually constrain it so that the only paths that we ever consider taking do not go outside the boundaries of the track, which meant that our error could not have come from our path. This means it had to have come from controlling the car and somewhere along this pipeline, the commands that we fed the car were not the actual commands that we needed in order for the car to follow the path correctly. Controls, as the name implies, controls the car. Basically, they take the path that planning has come up with and figure out what inputs to feed the car in order for the car to follow that path. Essentially, controls is replacing the actions of the human driver, such as steering and pressing down on the gas pedal or the brakes. So let's talk a little bit about how controls work and our best guess as to what caused this issue. The pieces of information that we have for our controls is the state, which is the current state of the car. So that's something like X, Y position, heading angle, which we'll call psi, the velocity in terms of the X component, velocity in terms of the Y component, and the rate of change of the heading angle, R. 
And we also have to pass in the desired path, so where we want this car to go. And here, this is defined in terms of some positional coordinate and its curvature of the path. And this gets fed into something that we call the high level controller, which is here. And let's call this HLC for short. So in this box here, we have the velocity planner. And the goal of the velocity planner is just to come up with the fastest velocity that we can go given the position and the curvature of this path that we're trying to follow. Now in our velocity planner, we have some desired velocity that we've come up with, and we're actually going to output the acceleration necessary to get to that velocity. And we pass this information, so that's the velocity and the acceleration, into what we now consider as the low level controller. So that's here. And let's call this LLC for short. So in the low levels controller, we have two controllers actually. We have something called the lateral controller. And then we have something called the longitudinal controller. If we think about a car like this, with wheels on its side like this, this is a really bad car drawing, but you kind of get the idea. Lateral just means it's controlling side to side, how far it is from where we want to go. And the longitudinal is controlling this back and forth. So this is where we're controlling the acceleration and the velocity and so on. So if we go back up here. This state actually gets passed into this lateral controller as well as this longitudinal controller. And we have this acceleration and velocity from the velocity planner that gets passed into the longitudinal controller. We also pass in the x, y from our path up here, our position, and the curvature into the lateral controller. So once we have these two controllers, this is our car, and the inputs that we get are the steer angle, so basically how much steering we need on the steering wheel as well as the force request. And this force request is basically the acceleration. It's basically saying, hey, go faster or slow down. If we replan at high frequencies, we're giving feedback in terms of acceleration into the high levels controller. And we're also giving feedback in the velocity term to the low levels controller. And what we think the issue is, is essentially the fact that we have these two controllers stacked on top of each other, and there are two conflicting commands that are going on right here. And so essentially what we think is happening is these two controllers are in conflict with one another. So when we say, hey, we want to get up to this speed, it might not pass in an acceleration that's fast enough to get there and vice versa. When we say, hey, we want to slow down to this speed, it might pass in a deceleration that's too small so that we can't actually brake enough. And what actually caused our out of bound error, we think is because we went into chicane way too fast. It was because these two controllers were in conflict with one another. And so we couldn't pass an accurate force request to slow down enough before hitting that turn. So we went out of bounds. Now our question is how in the world do we go about solving this? The most obvious answer is unstack the controllers because the stacking of the controllers is what leads to this conflicting force request, which is causing us to not speed up enough or to not slow down enough. One way that we can do that is we can actually use a model of the car in order to come up with our controls commands. Because at the end of the day, everything is kind of an optimization problem. In controls, you want to try to get from point A to point B, what are the most optimal series of commands that you can give the car to get from A to B while deviating from this path 
as little as possible. And if we use as much information that we have about the car as possible, whether it's a simplified model or it's data that we're collecting along the run or something else, then the more information we have, the better our solution is to this optimization problem and the more closely we can actually follow that path. So stay tuned for our next event where we're gonna try to fix this error and go for the gold.